To say that Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League had a rough launch would be a massive understatement. There was viral outrage at the plot in general, and Batman's rather inglorious death in particular. There continue to be server problems out the ass, and the few people who can play the game have lambasted it for being mind-numbingly repetitive, endlessly recycling a small handful of content to the point of pure tedium. The game's peak players on Steam are less than half the also-failed Marvel's Avengers, its active Steam player count tends to hang around 500. The game quickly fell out of the top 20 played games on PlayStation and the top 50 on Xbox. By all observable metrics, the game has flopped hard. I ranted about the thing for nearly an hour, and somehow we're still not done. See, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is a live service game and the end of March saw its first content update with a major expansion, adding new story content, two new Brainiac boss battles, and an exciting brand new playable character to the game's roster, the Joker. I'm here, bitches, and I brought favors for everybody. Well, the Joker expansion has finally landed, and my god, this has got to be the worst expansion to a live service game or game in general in history. If this isn't a giant red flag that Suicide Squad is on life support, I don't know what is. Medical report. Scott, you're a very sick man. Flattery won't save you. Let's start out with the big reason that people were excited getting to play as the Joker. How does he play? Is he another copy paste of the other characters with little to no individuality or uniqueness? Well, here's the thing. You don't actually get the Joker. You have to unlock the Joker by killing the first of the new Brainiacs, which wouldn't be so bad. Except you can't fight the new Brainiac until you grind the new multiverse levels to farm a new arbitrary level called Fear. You need to get your Fear to level 35 to access the Brainiac fight, and each mission that we played increased our Fear level by one. If we were lucky. So yes... The Joker is hidden behind an eight-hour grind wall. You do not get access to the Joker until you rescue him by killing the second Brainiac. And you cannot go fight the second Brainiac until you grind up to get fear level 35 by repeating the same guy. Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, yes. what the fuck? Uh, what? Fuck? However, I, you What? Oh, my... Fuck you! Fuck! <laughs> I'm sorry, I should be doing the proper Joker laugh. Fuck! 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 Oh, yep! Yeah. You, you have got to be shitting me! Like, fuck! Like I said, this expansion was made with a budget of about two dollars. I know you think I'm kidding about that. But I'm not. There are no, I repeat, zero new story missions added to the game for the Joker or the new Brainiac. You just grind some quote-unquote new missions until a new arbitrary number gets high enough. And I put new missions in the biggest air quotes possible because the missions in this expansion are all copy-pasted repeats of levels from the base game. Here's a level where you protect a poison ivy plant. Here's a level where you destroy a big cannon. Here are hordes of grunts and brutes and a survival mode. All against the basic enemies that you've already been fighting for about 20 hours! This entire expansion is grinding a few repeated missions until you get a single rematch with a pre-existing boss, and that's it! It's like Rocksteady saw Anthem's Tombs of the Legionnaires and thought its big problem was that it needed to be worse. And here's the punchline. Do you not feel like grinding for eight hours to unlock the new character? Well, you can get the Joker early and start using him right away. By paying $10. After Rocksteady swore left and right that there would be zero pay-to-win microtransactions and the only paid DLC would be cosmetic. Pay $10 to skip eight hours of grind. Kill the Justice League has officially reached the point of charging you money not to play it. Just wow, Rocksteady. You really pulled a Lucy and the football. Promise us this brand new character, hype him all to hell, 
and then pull the rug out and demand money if we don't feel like dedicating an entire work day to your bullshit. Instant gratification, if you cough up the cash for it. Contrast with the also-failed Marvel's Avengers, where every time they added a new character, you got that new character right away! And Kate Bishop, Hawkeye, and Black Panther all had their own story campaigns with actual cutscenes and narratives and new content! It wasn't until the game was running on fumes with Spider-Man, Jane Foster, and Winter Soldier that they started to forego proper expansions, and Suicide Squad is starting out at that desperation point! The game's only a month and a half old, and Rocksteady is already at Avengers' deathbed! Just how, how, how did they think this was okay? All right, I'm being a little facetious. There's a little more new stuff here. There are new maps for Metropolis and the Elseworld missions. They're exactly the same as the old maps, just with Joker graffiti and some gift wrap reskins. They drop power-ups into the missions now. They don't really do anything except the one that grants infinite ammo, which still barely does anything because everyone drops ammo anyway. There's new gear to farm. The new gear pool is so shallow that you'll constantly be swimming in duplicates to the point of comedy. And aside from a reverse flash mod that I think grants you good buffs and a polka dot man grenade that I think covers a wide area, it's hard to tell for all the barfed up visual effects, all the new gear was junk to me anyway. Some of the new gear is Scarecrow themed and deals a new status ailment called Poison. Poison doesn't seem to actually do anything, and the Scarecrow gear that I farmed was pure crap. And of course, the major change to the missions are the new modifiers that they apply to the mastery levels, aka the difficulties that you need to grind in order to get the good equipment. So let's just peruse these modifiers here, okay? They nerfed the Frenzy and Super Moves, which all but wipes out your pre-existing builds. They nerfed the Burning Ailment, which directly screws the Joker. Enemies are immune to Venom Frenzy, which directly makes all that Bane gear you farmed completely useless. Enemies all revive unless poisoned. Enemies regenerate health unless poisoned. Enemies all highly resistant to damage unless poisoned. Enemies take 95% less damage unless poisoned. Are you kidding me? So poisoning doesn't really do shit on its own but they made the enemies immune to literally everything else. So basically, if you want to get anywhere in the new expansion, you have to hijack all your character builds to use the crappy new equipment. Brilliant move, making a game based on loot that then forces you to throw out all your best loot. What the fuck is the matter with you? I cannot find the words to convey what a friggin' ripoff this expansion is. The big new content update that was going to save the game, and all you get is a grind wall of copy-pasted missions with a copy-pasted boss and a copy-pasted character at the end of it. I had planned to just rail on how the expansion doesn't add dick and bug out, but speaking of bugging out... It nearly broke us how unbelievably glitchy this expansion is. It's like Rocksteady saw the mass negative reactions to the base game and took them as a challenge to make it even worse. I had to close and re-enter the game twice just to get past the first screen explaining the new expansion. Almost every multiverse incursion that we played experienced severe lag and glitched enemies to where it felt like we were only barely inflicting damage. And the second incursion we tried, the server crashed and cheated us out of any progress. It felt like damn near every level we'd run into at least one brute that had unlimited health or got stuck in slow motion to where it couldn't die. In the base game, I ran into a bug where my gun immediately read as having zero ammo, reloaded, then kept up that cycle until the gun was empty. Yeah, that happened to me dozens of times playing this expansion. Enemies by and large seemed lethargic, like they barely even noticed that we were there, barely attacking and snipers taking so long to fire that I had plenty of time to shoot them back. And my god, the levels where you have to escort a truck to one of Brainiac's terraforming machines these levels are so busted, they barely work. I could let slide the truck's horrid pathfinding to where it spastically sputters to its destination a few feet at a time. I could almost forgive the towers you have to destroy by getting past brutes that glitch to where their death animation takes full on minutes, so they just sit there stalling any progress. But the worst part is when you have to protect the truck from enemies. 
The truck reaches the terraformer and a clock appears on the screen for two and a half minutes. This clock is broken. The mission timer was never unanimous among the three of us. It was jumping back up constantly for absolutely zero in-game reason. Even when it got down to the last five seconds and hit zero, it would bug out and refill to where the final countdown would trigger multiple times. The game is not supposed to do this. We would seriously be stuck in this one spot for this one mission for over 15 minutes at a time because they couldn't program a clock. Are you freaking kidding? Even garbage our switch somewhere hucksters can program a goddamn clock. The game bugged to where we couldn't use the squad ultimate move for something like an hour. Miles got stuck in the scenery again. We did a toy man mission where you have to rescue civilians. Only the civilians health at any given moment was determined via random number generator. And you just had to sit on ass for like a minute until the prompt to save or release a civilian finally decided to work. But I think by far my favorite glitch came one time when I tried using Boomerang's traversal move. See, Boomerang can teleport around a group of enemies dealing a ton of damage, only the game bugged out at one point to where he didn't come back. Boomerang finally managed to escape the game. And at the end of a truck escort mission that took half a damn hour between a bugged truck, bugged timers, and bugged enemies, the disappearing glitch almost happened again, except my bugging out of existence finally seemed to push the truck to finish the damn level. Oh, and I found a Forbes article claiming that paying for the Joker only works about half the time. I just... I have no words for how flat-out non-functional this expansion is. Missions bugged to go on forever or to be flat out impossible. Rocksteady said that they couldn't work on patching the game because they were too busy working on expansions. Might be time to reassess your priorities, dillweeds! Exactly one week after the Joker DLC dropped, the game announced a new springtime promotion, giving away completely free skins themed on Easter. And King Shark's Easter outfit turns him brown to look like a chocolate bunny. He looks like he's made of shit. Actual, literal, human shit. They should call this skin the Sewer Shark. All you have to do to get these terrible skins is to log in daily for a week straight and go to the shop to claim your giveaway. The shop, where it dangles the Joker in front of you alongside all those other skins if you just cough up some cash. Please, for the love of God! They are so desperate. They are so sad and desperate to force player numbers up by any means necessary to drag you into the shop on the off chance you might buy something to keep the lights on for a few more days. Actually, you want to know just how desperate they are to boost their player numbers? The game is selling a battle pass, which none of us bought because battle passes are a scam and we're not tool bags. You pay money up front and then the battle pass gives you extra rewards for playing missions. It takes 20 missions to unlock a single reward on this pass. It takes 1,500 missions to clear the entire thing. People estimate that you'd have to play for 200 hours to clear the entire battle pass. You can't make this up. The battle pass is also bugged to sporadically give you rewards even if you haven't paid for it, because I got the Wayne Tech Deadshot skin for totally free. Thanks, you buggy sack of crap! It was seriously over seven hours before we finally got high enough ranks to challenge Brainiac, and the fight itself took so long it knocked it up to eight hours of work before we could use the Joker. And the reason that it took so long is the new Brainiac fight is a mountain of bullshit! Brainiac floats above you not doing anything, and you just have to fight hordes of goons. The exact same as the hours of grind you went through to get this far. The exact same thing you do all damn game! Eventually, you kill enough enemies to drop his shield, you shoot him until he loses like an eighth off his health bar if you're lucky, and then the shield goes back up and you go back to doing the same damn thing. The fight is torturously drawn out since it takes forever for Brainiac's shield to drop, and the fight is scripted with three events where dropping his shield doesn't actually do anything. Because he gets into some kind of giant form where he shoots at you with a Gatling gun that doesn't actually hurt even if he hits you. 
he spawns mines. And the mines don't explode. The mines don't do literally the one thing that mines are designed to do. But you know what made this fight just extra insufferable? My shotgun bugged out to drop all of its ammo right before the battle began, and I was not allowed to pick up more shotgun ammo. I am dead serious. I caught it on video. Here's me walking through a sea of dropped ammunition, and my shotgun didn't refill at all. The game bugged out to completely disable my primary weapon, so I had to do this whole boss fight with nothing but melee and a sniper rifle. Just... This broken ass expansion can't do anything right! The Brainiac boss fight that they hyped as this expansion's entire reason for being and all you do is fight more of the same enemies you've been fighting the rest of the game. This is like less than zero ideas. So now that we've collectively fought more copy-paste enemies for an entire work day at an actual job, we finally unlocked the Joker. And bright side, all of us could use him at once. I don't care who thinks we're silly. You be daffy and I'll be dilly. We'll order up two bowls of jelly, setting the woods on fire. I call our new all Joker squad queer die for the straight guy because this new Joker is flaming levels of gay stereotype. Put it in me. Oh. I'm gonna do your challenge, but afterwards we need to talk about your aesthetic choices, Nigma. My Batman never held me like that. Maybe I went overboard on the chloroform? Seriously, this guy does not feel like the Joker. He's got no menace, no threatening presence, no chaotic energy, no grit. He's so sanitized and safe. I'd call him a Saturday morning cartoon Joker, except I don't want to insult the actual Saturday morning cartoon Jokers. <laughs> You've got Moxie! I feed Moxie to the hyenas. This mound of diseased hyena filth who's not fit to lick the dirt from my spats! But I digress. He gets a grand total of two cutscenes, one when you boot up and one when you unlock him, and he has basically zero interactions with any of the rest of the squad. How you add in the Joker and have zero interactions with Harley Quinn is a level of failure that I cannot comprehend. Oh, and the first levels where we all tried out the Joker bugged out to where he could barely damage the enemies and our attacks didn't do shit. Should just call him the Janker! Okay, Janker's traversal mechanics badly need a tutorial, but they're actually pretty fun. He has a super jump that you can fire with L1 and X twice without having to land, and his gliding almost kinda works like the flying in Mario 64. Holding R1 and X gets you a decent amount of speed, even though it still works on a frustratingly small overheat meter. He can also hover in midair to shoot people just like Deadshot, like the one bit of useful feedback that Rocksteady actually listened to. But past that, Joker just works the same as every other character in the game. His skill tree seems to reward you for using burning status ailments, like you light enemies on fire and Janker spreads it and then he gets damage buffs. It's at least a hint of a different playstyle, but that's it. Oh, and now that I'm playing the Janker, every single mission increases my fear ranking by three, instead of the one we were getting before. Those fuckers artificially cut your progression down to a third to try and joke hold you into paying for Joker! This just has to be pure spite at this point! Truth be told, the Janker is kinda fun to use. It's nice to have a new character that's well developed. The problem is literally the entire expansion around him. Bugged out the ass, boring rehashes of the base game, frustrating modifiers trying to force you to throw out all your old equipment, and a boss that is barely even a boss. It's like all the team's effort went into Jenker's traversal mechanic, and all the rest of this expansion was bashed out in five minutes. The control, C, and V keys of all Rocksteady's workstations are worn down to nubs. But hey, once you get the Joker, you can immediately use him to fight the game's third Brainiac, right? Well, no! You can't! Rocksteady is so hosed that they can only manage to release half of the expansion at a time! That second Brainiac that they promised? 
is coming at some indeterminate point later this spring. And I'm pretty sure that when the second half does drop, it's just going to be another empty copy pasted grind wall with more useless gear they'll try to force you to use anyway. Oh, and the third Brainiac has been teased as a repeat of the Superman boss fight. So, I have an awkward question. The first three Brainiacs have been redos of the Flash, Green Lantern, and Superman boss battles. Batman is the only other boss in the base game, and they have 10 Brainiacs to go. So after they rehash Batman, and you know they're going to do it, are they just going to circle back and copy all the leaguers again? Or is Rocksteady actively trying to kill the game before they have to answer that question? And there's one more little detail that makes Rocksteady's expansion plan so much more confusing. Rocksteady announced that they have four new playable characters in the pipeline. Joker was the first, Mistress Freeze is the second, Lawless, aka Deadshot's daughter, is third, and the fourth season of expansions has been announced that it will add Deathstroke. Deathstroke is already done. Seriously, hackers are playing as him right now, and Warner Brothers is playing whack-a-mole taking down all videos and photos of him to provide evidence. So, somebody please make this make sense. Season 1 was so ungodly rushed that they could only squeeze out half of it at a time, but the star of Season 4 is already done. What in the hell is Rocksteady actually doing?! When Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League first launched, it was merely the prototypical corporate-mandated product. Executives threw every buzzword into a cauldron with a sporadically popular IP to chase trends left and right with barely any real thought to it. It's baffling that Rocksteady's name was attached to it, but I at least understand in general how that dreck happened. But this Joker expansion? This broken, empty, padded, shameful, recycled, embarrassing, puth? Pathetic excuse for new content? No, I need an explanation for how the hell this happened. Your game has bled out its players. Rocksteady should be pulling out all the stops to entice players back and win over any scrap of goodwill that they can. And instead, all the focus is on bludgeoning their remaining players with grind walls the size of Mount Everest. How did this happen? Did Warner Brothers slash their budget? Were they way too rushed getting any kind of an expansion out the door? Is Deathstroke's completed state just a sign that Rocksteady is being grossly mismanaged and has no idea or focus for what it's doing? Or is it my personal headcanon that Rocksteady is actively trying to murder the game so they can get back to doing anything else? Are they trying to botch the online multiplayer game in such spectacular fashion that nobody ever asks them to make another one? Well, they're well on their way to that goal because Season of the Joker has got to be the worst expansion I've ever seen. Even the game's most die-hard of defenders are widely abandoning ship as Jenker has made it clear that there is zero hope left for this thing to rebound. I don't even know what Rocksteady could possibly do to salvage the game at this point, but I know someone who's got a suggestion. We take that man there and slap him in that box there, and roll it into that vat of acid there. <laughs> this is, this is gonna no make good. for a good clip. Bees, knees, bees no good. Bees no good. Bees no good. I'm, I'm out no styling good. all of you. <laughs>